Hey! <laughs> Whoopsie. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Festool Live. It is noon. It's Friday. Happy Festool Friday, everybody. Wow, have we got a Festool Live show for you today. And we're all really excited about it. But first, got to announce the team. Right over here, we have Big D. Check out that unbelievable new t-shirt we have. Hey. Team Planex. Right here, we have Chris, the unit, Cybert, <laughs> on camera. Over here, we have a special guest. Minnie is not with us today, but we have Quentin. How do you say your last name? Delhauser. He's one of our product managers. He's working the whiteboard for us today. And online, we have Brent, as always, answering your questions. Okay, so we're on YouTube. Thank you for watching. We will be on Instagram. Thank you for subscribing. We will also have this on Facebook. And also, down on your uh, YouTube channel, there's a little bell. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Festool Live. But guess what? I always say this. You can go back and rewatch it because I got a ton of information to impart on you today. Uh, this is episode number 48. Believe it or not. Okay. So what is it? Let's see. What are we going to do today? He's got a Team Playneck shirt on. Hmm. I think we need to sand some drywall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as we go through this, uh, I've been dying, dying to show you this new tool. It's coming out here in North America. It's around the world. I believe it's already released. I've been watching videos of all you guys out there in Europe using this. Uh, I've, we've been using it here, training, doing videos for the launch that's coming out. And when's this being launched? Mm, I think in May. May, May 18th. May 18th here in North America. I, <laughs> I was given the privilege to show you this on Festool Live today. This is an amazing machine, and as I go through it, uh, you can go back and rewatch it. I'm not going too in depth. I want to sand drywall. I want to remove some popcorn with you. I want to give you some basic usage tips with it, um, and let's just look at it. Okay, so it comes in a generation three sustainer XXL, <clears throat> where the plain XEZ comes in a bag. And I'll do a few comparisons. I don't want to get too much into it. And the original classic uh, Plain X uh, came in a uh, Maxi Sustainer. Okay. Um, I have a CT48 right here. We will always recommend the CT36 Auto Clean. This is the CT48 Auto Clean. Yes, you can use it with it. But we recommend the CT36 Auto Clean because it comes with the hose that links to the new Plain X. I'll go into that a little bit further uh, as we go through this. Auto clean means it cycles through and it punches a burst of air on top of the filter to keep up with the planex. But you always still have to clean the filter periodically throughout the day. So that's all I'm going to say about the auto clean. <clears throat> if you need to link it, the old Maxi never linked to the top of the uh, sys dock. But now if you take an M style and put it uh, sustainer M. Okay, you can lock it to the top, and you can lock your plain X XXL to it. So as I wheel this, I'm going to get in the, the best spot so you guys can all see this. All right, I'm going to open it up. I mean, you can stack more sustainers on top of here. All right, but as I open it up, you're going to see the sanding head right here. Okay, here's the, the power arm. That's where all the controls are. It comes with a plug it cord. Yeah, baby. All right. And it comes with one extension. <clears throat> it comes with a couple of pieces of 180 grit paper. All right. It comes with some Velcro straps to lock the plug it cord uh, to the hose if you want it to be. Whew. Where do I start? Okay. So I think one of the biggest things to understand about the new Planex is let's go back in, in time right now where we came out with the original Planex. We call it the classic. And you would put the pieces together. You could put extensions in between and you could lock them together like this. Okay. Locks together like this. <clears throat> right. Locks together like this. And then you put it together like this. Okay. It is easy. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. That's a plain X easy. <laughs> okay. But it is easy. And you have a small format. You could put extensions to get a longer reach sander. Right. Okay. It's a brushless motor. 
Okay? No. The original Planex had a brush in it. Then we came out with a Planex CC with a, what? A brushless motor. It was a single length, but it was very, we took away some of the complicated uh, pieces too that people got all confused with the inside section, suction, and outside suction. The Planex, and here's the big thing to understand about the new Planex. The Planex Classic and the Planex EZ were rotary motion, constant spinning motion. So <clears throat> the reason I went back and I started talking about these two, the Planex EZ is staying in the lineup, okay? The thing I want to talk about is how we learned from this one to innovate on this one as we got better with motors and everything, okay, to bring it to this one because it's a simple formula. And that formula is you, <laughs> okay? It's the professional drywallers out there that say, hey, this is a great machine, but you can do it better this way, this way, this way, and this way. And it's also gentlemen like Quentin who go out and observe uh, with prototypes how you are using these machines, okay? And seeing how you're standing with like with the classic or the EZ, okay? And guess what happens? We get these ideas and they go on to the new one. So that's kind of how we do everything at Festool. We listen to you, okay? So as I go through this, I'll go through a couple of things with you. <clears throat> I'm going to put a piece of paper on here because I want to describe the paper and the pad, okay? You're going to notice all the holes in the paper, okay? As we innovate things, come on over here, Chris. This is the original paper, okay? This is the uh, Plainex uh, classic paper, and it works with the EZ, but we didn't forget about you because <coughs> it still has that center hole pattern. So the new paper is we have more holes on it. And the dust extraction is even better, <laughs> okay, because we figured out a few things. <coughs> it is available, okay, and you're going to notice two different hole patterns. Hopefully we can see this. This is granite paper. It's available from 80 grit to 3, I mean, I'm sorry, 40 grit to 320 grit. In the lower grits, 40 to 60 on the granite, it uh, has 48 holes. And on the higher grits from 80 to 320, it has 128 holes. Better airflow. We still have in the arsenal a paper is granite net where it pulls through the whole net product. That's for like softer materials. We do have this for really tough popcorn removal that has a lot of paint on it or some really hard materials. This is saffir paper. It's got, the, it's, it's got 48 holes in it, and it's available in 24 and 36 grit. Okay? <clears throat> the big difference is we've always had pads for the Planex and the Planex EZ. And in those pads, you had the, the inner holes, and you, we had suction from the outside as well. And one of the things we learned, because we had these, and I'll, bring, I'll take the EZ over here, we had these bristles. And that blocked the dust, because this was rotary, right? And dust would get out here. So these bristles, okay, uh, would block the dust going in. But here's the situation. If you're, if you're sanding mud that was not cured completely, you would get little hard pieces in here and dry. It would scratch the surface, even though this is spring-loaded and would float with the head. So what we did with the random orbit, okay, with the pad is, and we would try to compensate and stuff by putting interface pads. This is the backing pad, okay? It's really hard, and you'll see when I show you the pad on the Planex head, this is the, this is the actual pad. It's hooked on with, look, eight screws right here, and you can remove them, put a replacement. These are designed to last a very, very long time. Okay, but you're going to notice there's no bristles on the outside, and you can still sand to an inside corner within five millimeters. So you can usually finish up with a, like a DTS 400. Hopefully you're following that. So you're going to notice that this pad, okay, it's an interface pad, but it's a pad. It's a little bit soft. So what we wanted to do, combine it with the random orbit motion, okay, the softness of this pad with the granite paper 
this actually floats on there. And we'll also, I'll also talk about the suction control. So what happens is you get an absolutely perfect surface. Okay? So remember I said we've been watching you and how you're using the sanders, okay? So we've come out with a lot of things. A lot of the times you saw, you saw on the classic... Um, Plain X, I gotta get used to calling things classic, okay? <laughs> Putting the, the heads on or the arms together, okay? I want you to see this, and there's a little icon here. You're gonna notice when I lock it together, it locks together when I put it on the Plain X. But to completely remove it, when I'm in the removal, I toggle it back. There's a little. So when I put this together, just like this, you'll notice there's no exterior cords. The suction comes right through here, and look how easy this is, watch. I put it in and lock it. It's that easy. So that's just Festool, us looking at how you're operating this and taking some of the confusion out of there. To remove it, okay, you just go like this. In this format here, it only weighs nine pounds, four kilograms. With one extension, it weighs, I think, 10 and a half pounds or 4.8 kilograms. This, the ergonomics on this are unbelievable because normally if I was and I'm going to have Chris pan over here and I'm sanding this popcorn here I would automatically put an extension in or sanding high up on this wall the ergonomics on this and you'll see as I'm operating right here it's because I have this T handle now and I want you to notice this little hole in here I'll show you what that's for in a moment okay <clears throat> I would always coach people when I'm using a, a Planex when everybody asks me about the weight hey how heavy is it I go Hold it right there. People would come up and go, hey, that's heavy. I go, no, it's not heavy because the wall absorbs a lot of the weight, okay? And what's really nice about this, because of the T-handle, I'm not over my shoulders a lot. I'm right in here. I'm supporting it down low so it's real comfortable, okay? So that's just a couple of things on there. And before I start sanding, I'm just trying to think if I need to talk about anything else here. It's variable speed, brushless motor. Okay, and you know what? Let's get going. As I hook this up, this comes with it. I have one already installed on the Planex over here. Okay, and right when I when I first saw this, I was like, okay, oh my God, is that a cool little feature? Let's show you where it goes. It goes either on this side of the T-handle or this side of the T-handle. I have it installed here. <clears throat> and what it does is as I wrap this in like this, Let's see if I can do this smoothly on camera. I lock it in. It keeps, it keeps the cord and hose away from my hand when I'm sanding. It's actually pretty slick. I got a plug-in cord installed, and this is why we recommend this hose. It's anti-static. Okay, it comes with the CT36 Auto Clean. It's because when I hook the hose up, it has this little, I call it little mechanical end here. So when I take that, that claw locks it in so the hose doesn't fall off when you're sanding. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, I'm going to show you this. It's kind of funny. Uh, we were watching people, and uh, we got all kinds of pictures on how people sand drywall with the Planex. And it's usually, sometimes, it's somebody sanding and another person, watch, following them with a light to inspect the surface, right? We've had, we have photos out on the job site of people <laughs> putting LED lights just putting duct tape in them to them, <laughs> okay? It's crazy. Well, and I'm going to tell you what, there was a lot of research done. There was, tw I think, 12, 15 different um, uh, versions of it until we got it right. <clears throat> Check this out. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to put it right up here. It doesn't, look, there's a button right here. Yeah, it's got a light bulb. Check it out. It's a 360 degree, Okay. And it's a five, somebody asked me, it's a 5,000 Kelvin LED. That way there, it's basically daylight. 3,000 Kelvin and below, it's a yellowy light. Over uh, 6,000, it's usually a bluish light or tone to it. 5,000 nails it. And what's really cool is all our other cis lights or lighting solutions at Festo are all 5,000. That way there, you can use them in conjunction. Say um, on a job site, I'm using a cis duo, our big uh, job site uh, light, it'll work perfect with it as well. Okay, now, the other feature that was confusing originally, oh, I'm going to turn that off. 
Oh, blinded by the light. Okay. <laughs> You're going to know. Oh, hopefully, I want to see. Chris, come in here so you can see this. Okay. So, we made the icons really easy <laughs> to read. See what this is pointing to the wall? I'm going to be sanding on the wall. This is called suction control. See how that's pointing to the ceiling? Okay. Think about this. Think about sanding overhead. And that can be fatiguing, can it? Uh, uh, uh. This will actually suck right to the ceiling. You've got to be careful with it. And I'm always verifying that I'm sucking here to the wall because I don't want that much suction because this will pull you into the wall. Now, as I get going with this, <clears throat> I used to coach everybody. With the classic and the easy, you always would start it on the wall, the pad on the wall, and then start sanding, and then remove it and turn it off. With the random orbit action here, you always start it off the wall. Okay? So let me get going. Let me see. There's an on-off switch. I always start between 5 and 4 to get used to the machine speed. Oh, that's the pad speed. This is your on and off. Okay? I'm going to turn it on. And you're going to see. Okay, now here's what I, I want to show you, and hopefully we can get this. Okay, as I sand over here, I'm going to come halfway off. Look at the dust extraction. It's incredible. All right, and I'm just going to take time doing this as I'm doing this. And, yes, I laid on a lot, a lot of mud on this so we'd have a good demo. And you can also feel that suction. Okay, now, the other thing with this as I'm sanding don't, don't come away from the wall like this. Walk to the wall because that head is fully articulated. Okay? And you can get right down in there and sand those seams effortlessly. Like, I'm going to come right across this heavy mud right here, and you're going to see that just disappear. Okay? So there you go. And I'm going to take it off and turn it off. <coughs> I was talking to Gwent this morning, and it was kind of funny. He goes, he said, Sedge, he goes, I'm not a drywall guy, but, man, I was doing a wall in my house, and he goes, this was effortless. I got a great finish with it. Aha, and I want you to see this. Look at this. Look, there's barely any dust on there. Yeah, I sanded it for a couple minutes. I got 180 on here. I always start high. If it isn't, I, I always start. <laughs> I always start with a higher grit, <laughs> okay, and I work my, and if it's not taking enough, if it's I'm taking too much time, I lower the grit to remove the mud, and all dependent on what type of mud to use, an ultra soft, or ultra light, or is there a medium, or is it a really hard uh, mud, so all kinds of stuff come into play, but you just gotta, you gotta, how do you say, practice with it a little bit, the other thing I want to show you is the new cradle, because I'm going to change paper now, uh, I got some 80 grit right here. It's stored here. Now, we used to have another cradle, and the only one that really fit on it was the classic Planex. But now, all three Planex fit on there. So there's something I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take this because I'm going to start sanding some popcorn. I'm going to take it. I'm going to bring that control to the ceiling. Okay, I'm going to change my paper. Pretty simple. All right, let me grab a piece of paper here. You can store it right in there. You can also store your extension in there, just like that. Let's get that right in there like that, okay? I'm going to come over. Look at all the holes. You see the, the eight screws holding it in. It's got a, a slight give to it. A lot of thought went into this. Let me get find a hole, find a second one, and it lines up. Okay, so <clears throat> you probably heard the CT36 bumping a little, Okay. It bumps every 10 seconds, that hit of air to clean the filter. But what I'm going to do, because I, I want to show you the suction control on this, I'm actually going to turn it off for a demonstration. If you are sanding popcorn for a living, leave it on there, but be aware that when you hear that bump, that's going to that's going to lose some of the suction onto the ceiling. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the suction control, and I'm going to take it off just for a minute. i got my suction all the way up there. Okay? Now... When I say it's about ergonomics with this machine, okay, one of the things we saw with the other Planexes is <clears throat> when you start your machine, and a lot of people when they're sanding pup, or removing popcorn or sanding ceilings, they would start the machine, and hopefully we get this. Look at this. They would go in like that, the pad spinning, 
and it would create a half moon. I call them scallop patterns on there. It was not a desired <laughs> result. But if we look at this, look how we designed the head here. This is actually the perfect ergonomic to put right up to the ceiling. In fact, that's why it sits like it does inside the XXL Generation 3 Sustain to maintain that perfect or, uh, angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. Okay. I'm going to bring it up to the popcorn, and I'm going to start sanding. And you're going to see how I can actually just go one-handed with this. I always get a kick out of when people do this in videos. All right, but I'm doing this so you can see this, okay, where it's basically an effortless popcorn removal, okay? I always, when I'm saying the popcorn, I overlap about half the pad, okay? And on here, I'm just using 80. But you can see how that comes right off. Now. If that's popcorn I rolled on, it was a great texture product, okay? But the thing is, is what if that popcorn's been up there for a while, okay? It has several coats of paint on there. That's when I would go to the, either the 24 or 36 grit sapphire. It's going to take a little bit more time, but it works. I was talking to somebody down in Orlando, and they had some popcorn ceiling that had 10 coats of of, uh, it was a flip apartment, had 10 coats of uh, uh, primer on there, kills. Guess what? It worked, but it took a little bit longer. Now, let's look at the pad. And I just removed that amount of popcorn. And let's go down here. Just the stuff I was bumping into, there's barely, barely anything on the floor. And this machine was getting the lion's share of it. So there you go. I don't have to inspect too much because I was doing it while I was, what, sanding with that LED light. So that's going to save you time. Okay. One of the questions I got quite a bit recently with this machine as I was doing training was, will the harness work with it? Absolutely. Um, the harness works with all three of our machines, the Classic, the EZ, and this one. But guess what? <laughs> with the ergonomics of the T-handle, Mo we are finding most people aren't using the harness with it because it's really comfortable. And the suction control. You could sand an entire room, remove popcorn, and it would be comfortable because we've taken the weight off of the machine. You, could, you saw it, how it sucks right to the ceiling. I was going one-handed. So, yes, there's been a lot of thought given to this new Planex. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know I shouldn't call it Planex 2.0, 2 but, boy, I just love calling it that. We call it the new Planex. We love it. Uh, what else do I need to cover? Anything? I'm just looking around, checking everything out. I covered the pads. I covered paper. Um, I mentioned this earlier. This is the DTS 400. Uh, this will get you right up against an adjacent surface. And we found that most people who were even using the Planex EZ and the Planex Classic were always going this for point up just to finish up. Okay. This is an adapter that you can put right into the end of the hose. You can get one of these. It comes with a CT48 auto clean, okay, but then that hooks right to that. So you can use this 36 millimeter hose and hook right up to any of the Festool uh, sanders to do your finish up, point up. Uh, let's see. I think I covered everything. Um, yep. Brent got all the questions, yeah, I would imagine. Brent's been doing a good job. We got a lot of application questions. He's been knocking those out, so we're doing great. Perfect, perfect. Wow, that was kind of easy. I'm looking at I'm looking at the board today because I've been mispronouncing and I I pronounce. Oh come on, look at that last one there. All right, so I'm going to say thank you. I think that's a wrap. Uh, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish, uh, removing popcorn and uh, sanding uh, drywall. The big thing about this is I didn't want to get too technical with everybody because when you get your Planex, um, the new Planex, now you have something to go back and reference on proper technique on how to start it off the wall, the quick setup with it. You're ready to go on this. Okay, so with that, being said, let's talk about where you're all from. Wow. You know what's really cool is Quentin really, really made these bold today, so I don't have to look. He had really small <laughs> handwriting the last time. Los Angeles. Wow. Ch how do you, hey, how do you pronounce that? Uh, 
Cheadle? Ooh, Cheadle, England. Ch- Shield? Okay. East Yorkshire, England. Switzerland. Johannesburg. Pinehurst. North Carolina. Bosman. Montana. Is that who I think it is? Oh, uh, that could be. Is I that think... drywall shorty? Uh, Woo! Maybe. Okay. We have Utah. Haverhill, Mass. Eatonton, Georgia. Edinburgh, Scotland. Phoenix, Arizona. Ottawa, Netherlands. Fountain Hill, Arizona. Prattville, Alabama. Ocean Park, Maine. I know that's you, Hank. Woo! Okay, White, White Stone, New York, Ural, Russia, New Orleans, Oregon, Cottage Grove, Minnesota, Jasper, Indiana, Orobro, Sweden, Belgium, Palestine, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, Bloomington, Indiana, go IU, Perth, Australia, Florida, Alabama, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Madrid, Spain, Brooklyn, New York, Southern Italy, and okay, you ready? Ola Fanston Fonstein, South Africa. I bet you I nailed it. Nailed it. 100%. You think I did? Yep. Okay. God, all those, all those ones I practiced from last week, you're probably watching out there. I, there was like five cities I couldn't pronounce. I actually looked them all up over on Monday, and uh, I got pretty good at them, but you didn't show up again today on the board. So there you go. Hey! Happy Festival Friday. We love you. Please stay tuned for next week. I'm already preparing for it. I ain't telling you. We'll tell you midweek next week what it is. Uh, what else do I got to say? I got to thank everybody. Brent, thank you uh, very much for answering all the questions. Saved me a ton of time. Quentin, thank you. Uh, Big D, thank you. you What's this guy's name? Chris, Chris. thank you. Okay. <laughs> Once again, thank you. Uh, this is episode number 48. We're almost at the one-year mark. We started April 10th last year, didn't we? Yep. Okay, so I want to thank you. We're going to keep going with this. we got some humongous plans for the rest of the year. We were just talking about it before we started the show uh, today. So thank you very much. This is the Plainex episode. Uh, The new Plainex episode. I keep it Wednesday 2.0. That's a wrap. I want to thank you. Have a killer weekend. Woo!